now go to the second, which is the infinite population. And in determining the possible samples, we use the formula n raised to n. Big N raised to small n. So this one is 4 squared is equal to 16. Take note that this one is for infinite population. And that is with replacement, meaning the n trace can be replaced. I have already listed the 16 samples here. Let us get now the sample mean. We have 18 plus 18 divided by 2 is 18. 18 plus 20 divided by 2 is 19. This one is 20. This one is 21. This one is 19. This is 20. This one is 21. This one is 22. So this one is 20. This one is 21, 22, 23. So we have 20, 21, sorry, 22, 23, and 24. So the next okay. step is to get the frequency, of course, of each sample mean. We have 18, 1. We have 19, 1, 2. We have 20, 1, 2, 3. We have 21, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 22, 1, 2, 3. We have 23, 1, 2. And we have 24, 1. Okay. So the next step is, of course, to get the probability of this. Remember that our... Total here is, of course, summation of f, which is equivalent to 16. So this is 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 6, 16. So probability of this, since we did this for the formula, the formula is, of course, the summation of x bar times this one. So this is equivalent to 1 over 16. This is 2 over 16. This one is 3 over 16. 4 over 16, 3 over 16, 2 over 16, and 1 over 16. The next is, of course, we multiply this. Again, the formula for the mean is equal to the summation of x bar multiplied by the probability of the sampled mean. So, we need to multiply this too. We have 18 over 16, 38 over 16, 60 over 16, 84 over 16. This one is 66 over 16. This is 46 over 16. And this is 24 over 16. And you will be getting the sum of, what is the sum of this? The sum is 336 over 16. You will just, of course, add all the numerators, and that is 336. You divide it by 16, and you will be getting there 21. So, our mean is also 21. The next step is to find, of course, the variance, since we have already the mean. In finding the variance, you don't read the formula. We need to square the sample mean first. 18 squared is 324. 19 squared is 361. This one is 400. This one is 441. 22 squared is 484. 23 squared is 529. And 24 squared is 576. Okay. And then, of course, we multiply it by this one. So we have x bar squared times the probability of the x bar. So this one is 324 over 16. This is equivalent to 722. 722 over 16. That's 361 times 2. This one is 1,200 over 16. 441 times 4 is 
1764 over 16 this one is 1452 over 16 this one is 1058 over 16 and the last one 576 over 16 of course to get the variance of this so we will be using the formula summation of x bar squared multiplied by its probability minus its mean squared. Okay. So how do we do it? We get the sum of this, add all the numerators over 16, and you will be getting there 7096 minus, of course, 21 squared. And once you calculate this, your variance here will be 2.5. And getting its square root for the standard deviation, we have 1.58. Okay, we can now place the mean, the variance, and standard deviation for infinite population here. We have 21. We have 2.5. And of course, we have 1.58. Now, let us compare this with the population mean variance and standard deviation. We already have the mean of the sampling distribution, the variance, standard deviation, of course, of both finite and infinite population. This one is without replacement and this one is with replacement. Now, let us try to get the population mean and compare this data later. So, let us recall first the formula. This is for population mean in our previous lesson. We have mu is equal to summation of x divided by the n. So, our n here is 4, of course. And the data are 20 plus 18 plus 22 plus 24. Okay. So, our population mean is equivalent to, this one is 84. 38 plus 46 divided by 4 and this one is 21. So this one is 21. This is 21. Now, how are we going to get its variance? To get the variance, you just square the difference of, of course, x and the mu and so that is x minus mu squared so we have here 18 20 22 24 so we have 18 minus 21 we have 20 minus 21 we have 22 minus 21 we have 24 minus 21 okay so we have now x minus mu squared is equal to negative 3 squared is 9 1 squared negative 1 is 1 1 squared is also 1 this is 3 squared that is 9 okay so we have now the summation of quantity x minus mu squared is of course quantity x minus mu squared is equal to what is this 20 okay so what is the formula in getting its variance to get the variance all you have to do is of course this one is the variance symbol for our population we have summation of x minus mu squared divided by the n so this is 20 divided by 4 so our standard deviation is equal to so this one is equal to 5 and this one is equal to 5 okay so what is now our standard deviation you just get the square root of this to get the square root of this that is 2.23 square root of 5 is 2.23 2.23 this one is 2.23 so based on the data, we can therefore conclude that if the population is finite with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, 
or the sampling is without replacement, we use the following. This one is the formula for drawing samples. And then the mean is just equivalent to the population mean. That is a conclusion. And now for the variance, you can just use the formula. Let's verify whether this one is true or not. This one is, of course, the population variance, which is 5. And then the small n here is 2. The big n is 4. And the big n is 4 here. So we have here 2.5. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Multiplied by, this one is 2 over 3. So you will be getting there, of course, 1.67. So that one is 1.67 and the square root of that is 1.3. So that's based on the formula. Now, if the population is infinite with mean mu and standard deviation sigma or the sampling is with replacement, we use this formula in drawing the samples and then the mean is still equal to the population mean. What about the variance? It's just half, isn't it? So therefore... It's not half actually, it is divided by n. So meaning to say, this one is equivalent to the variance of the population is 5 divided by the small n is 2 and that is 2.5. That's true. And now for of course the standard deviation, this one is equivalent to 2.5 divided by this one is 2.5 divided by the square root of 2. And you will be getting there 1.50. So from this data, we can also have these properties of the mean and variance of sampling distribution of sample means. One, the mean of the sample means will be the same as the population mean, as seen here. So without calculating the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means, as long as you have the population mean, you can already have, of course, the mean of the sampling distribution. Now, the variance or standard deviation of the sample means will be smaller than the variance or standard deviation of the population. As you can see, this one is 1.58. It's smaller than 2.23. This is for infinite. And 1.3 is smaller than 2.23 compared with, the, of course, population standard deviation for finite population. Number three, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean is also called the standard error of the mean. This one is the standard error of the mean. This one is the standard error of the mean. This is for finite and this one is for infinite. Okay. Note that the standard error of the mean decreases as the sample size increases. So if n increases, the small n increases, of course, this one decreases.